Okay, this is a quick introduction to MCO 455. When you go to my.seneca college, you're going to log in and you should be using the Firefox browser. The Firefox browser is the only reliable browser for Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. The only other one that works is Chrome. So things like Microsoft Edge, uh, Internet Explorer, even Safari web browser on the Mac do not work properly. So please use Firefox or Chrome. Now it's going to put you on this landing page here, which is institution page. And you can go to My Seneca Portal to actually go in and report any kind of ITS issues. But for the most part, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with courses. So when you go to courses, you're going to find your courses, lab and theory, lab and theory, for all your various courses. What I'm showing you here is all the lab and theory sections for MCO 455. There's roughly 200 people for theory and 200 for labs. So let's take a look at one of our lab sections, DDL. And right now, the most important thing to worry about right at the start of the course is the required supplies for MCO 455. And what I've done here is if you click here, it'll bring up this page where there's links to order all these various things. Now, the first and highest priority thing to order is the Freedom K64. You click here, you can add to cart, and usually it's sent within one to two business days. It's very fast to arrive. We're going to need this for by the second week of the course. Now, these growth devices here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, should be ordered as soon as you can because they're going to take a little longer to order. And by the end of the first half, you're going to start needing these. And if you want, you can say go to Grove Shield. And what you can do is just say add to cart. Then you can close this window. You can go back here to click here, temperature sensor. You can add that to cart. And as you keep adding these to your cart, you're going to see all of the things in your cart here listed up and totaled this page here, it shows you that basically the Freedom K64 should cost you about $60.58 Canadian and there's $8 shipping and handling. And so when you look at all these different things, these are the prices in Canadian dollars because the ones that are on that website are in American dollars and it's going to give you the total cost which is about $130. And one of the things is with a Grove or Seed Carrier, you've got three options and the cheapest option is the one that's shown here which is $12.57 to give you a grand total of about $130. Now there's no cost to the textbook. The textbook is actually online. It's a PDF. So the only cost to the course is this equipment that you're ordering. The beauty is that once you've got all this stuff you can then use it also for your TPJ course, for your projects course, and if you take MCO 556 you can use the Freedom K64 as well. Let's take a look. There's a course outline here, but the more important bit of information you're going to need for this course is a course addendum. And what it does is it goes through week by week what you're going to be doing in the theory and the lab classes and in green here it shows you the evaluations that you're going to get as you go through the course and my favorite study week of course and down here we're going to have a final evaluation I've called it a final exam but it's really a final evaluation so all the things in green here show you when the evaluations are going to be and how much they're going to generate in terms of marks now the first thing that we're going to be doing is course overview, preface, and so forth, which is the introductory chapter of the textbook, number conversions. And basically, if you look at lab one, number conversions is going to show up twice because it's a two-week lab. But what you're going to do is you're after uh, the first week, you're going to be doing some theory stuff for lab one as well as lab, and then you're going to be doing theory for lab one again. And then here you're going to have a lab quiz, which is worth 2% of your mark. Let's see what that means. Well, let's start with the textbook and it's called Embedded IoT Using Embed and it's free. You can just bring it up and it goes through all the different topics that you're going to do and a lot of this has to do with number conversions. So the theory for that is here but more importantly we have under labs here we have the lab which is number conversions. And lab conversions here this would be normally what we would do in a regular non-COVID classroom we would hand out these labs and you would actually fill these in and circle things that are wrong in here and you'd be able to click on here and it would launch a YouTube video about how to do this particular thing. So you've got all these links in here to show you how to do binary to octal, binary to hex and so forth and what you have to do is circle anything in these conversions that's incorrect. There's an ASCII chart here, there's hex calculations, answers, how to do NZVC, whatever that is and and so forth so it goes through all this kind of stuff and it teaches you as you go through using this and it shows you how to do and or an exclusive or let's take a look at the lab quiz so lab one questions 
So when you click on this, it's going to go through a series of questions in here. So it's going to say for question 1A on lab 1, are these the incorrect answers? Are these the incorrect answers? Or are these the incorrect answers? Or are none of them the incorrect answers? And that's how you're going to be doing basically lab 1. As I mentioned, lab 1 is going to involve some stuff in theory as well. So let's go take a look at the theory section, which in this case is DF. And what you're going to find here in the, the theory section are video lectures to go with the course textbook. So for instance, if we look here, Here's week one video lectures. So if we go in here, it's going to give you a course overview. So we click on this, it's going to launch that particular YouTube video, and away we go. And it's got preface, number conversions, and this is a folder. So if you double click on this, it's going to take you through how to do binary to octal, binary to and from hex, and so forth. And a lot of these were shown in that lab where you can click and get this information anyway. So if we go back, we also have ASCII and alternate characters. This is all the stuff that's in the video lectures for week one. So you can watch these video lectures and look at the textbook. And you also have practice quizzes here for these same things that you want to do. So for instance, week one, you might want to look at the course review. So let's take a look at that. And it's going to ask you questions like an embedded system is made up of, and it gives you a number of choices. It's going to give you questions here for theory, which are going to be showing up on the chapter quizzes here, and the chapter quiz questions will show up on the term test questions, and the term test questions pretty much show up on the final exam. So it's pretty much integrated in terms of how things work. But as, it, as I showed you at the start here, the video lectures really cover week one, then week two, and by the time you get to this, you're going to see week three, week four, and week five, where you can do the video lectures, work through the practice quizzes. Now, the practice quizzes are worth nothing, but they get you up to speed for the chapter quizzes, which are worth something. And at the same time, the lab portion goes through the same information, at least for the first two weeks here, and then you have to do the lab quiz, and it's worth 2% of your mark. So let's take a look at our semester calendar, which is available both in the lab and the theory section. It shows you when things start, such as September 14th for this semester all the way through to the end, and my favorite, break week. And it shows you also for next semester and so forth. So it shows you basically for a complete year cycle here. Now, when we want to take a look at our labs, these are the, the seven labs you're going to do, plus there's one extra one that we're going to do that I'm going to add later. But here's the thing, if we take a look again at our addendum, we're doing lab one here and we're doing a lab quiz on lab one here, which means that we have to have learned all the stuff in the theory and lab for the first week and the theory for the second week, and we have to do this lab quiz before the end of that period. Now the following week we're going to do in console programming, which means we're going to have a lab two quiz then, which means before you get to here, you better have done some things, such as creating a embed account, which it says preparing for lab two, installing a serial driver and configuring PuTTY, which is all going to be part of lab two. So you're going to have to pre-prepare for lab two because there's going to be a quiz in that two periods where you're going to have to be able to answer questions and so on. Let me just show you a little bit about what that's like because we have to worry about things like when is the chapter one quiz going to happen and it's going to happen in week three. However, in week three, we have all of these things here to learn before we can do the chapter quiz. But the chapter quiz is two periods. And so you're going to have to learn about these things here before you get to the chapter one quiz. And this should be done at least a few days before your theory class that's in week three. So if we go to video lectures, there is our video lectures for week three, and there's a lot of them. And then once you've done that, you're going to do the practice quizzes for week three which is here, before you're going to do the actual chapter quiz here. So it's important that before any chapter quiz, such as chapter one quiz, all the material up to including this is covered before you actually do the chapter quiz. Now if we take a look at week four, we're going to be covering I.O. and embed APIs and doing the chapter two quiz. The chapter two quiz again is two periods, so before you get to the theory class, for week four, you're going to have to have learned this stuff by doing the video lectures and by doing the practice quizzes for chapter two. Now, as we mentioned before, lab one, you're going to be doing in week one, both in theory and lab, and also in theory in week two. 
and then you're going to be doing the lab one quiz in week two and this is going to be two periods in length so add subtract n zbc and so forth all the information that you need to do the lab one quiz has to be understood before your lab in week two now in week three you have the lab two quiz based on console programming which means before you do lab two quiz which is again two periods you're going to have to have learned all of the information that's here under console programming. So here's lab two here. So some of the things that you're going to have to do before the week of lab two is to create an embed account, download and configure PuTTY for your use connecting to the board, learn about ANSI escape sequences, but there's also a video that's going to show you how to actually set up your Freedom K64 before you get to this. Now there's some questions here after you type this. So all of these things on comment, like what should you see when you do this, all of these kinds of things should be known or gone over before you get to the lab two quiz. So notice here when we go to week four, week four we're going to have a lab three quiz based on debugging using MCU Expresso, which is lab number three. So you're going to have to learn about these before you do this actual quiz. You're going to have to be prepared for every theory chapter quiz before the chapter quiz because it's going to take up two periods you're going to have to be prepared for the lab quizzes before the lab quiz because it's going to take two periods and I would suggest doing these exercises before this at least two or three days ahead and the reason for this is then you can go to faculty information send an email if there are issues before you get to the theory quiz or the lab quiz you can look at my timetable or your instructors timetable and figure out when is the best time to maybe set up some sort of meeting by sending them an email message. Now this is our embed development environment and when you get set up or you're going to sign up for free, when you get to this part of the embed sign up, make sure you choose academic work and put in Seneca College. When you go to the next screen it's going to ask you to choose your board from a list and to help with this you can select Pelion Device Ready which is going to eliminate things down to only 22 boards and the one right at the bottom is the one that you want to choose. At this point let's hit compiler. You want to send a confirmation email to your account. You click to confirm your email. Verify your email address you can click continue. Notice up in the right hand corner you're going to have your name and you'll also have up here the board that you're using which is a Freedom K64. You'll notice that there's no programs at this point point. and when you start doing lab 2 you'll be importing programs into here making corrections to errors that are there and then that becomes your program. When we get to the part where we want to do a lab quiz 2 for instance we're going to click on lab quizzes it's going to come up with lab 2 questions and this is going to be an idea of how some of these labs are going to work. We're going to click on lab 2 questions we're going to say continue and down here it's going to say click on the following lab 2 errors to get access to lab 2a. So if I click on this it's going to give me this screen here where I can import into compiler. Now at this point if you're logged into embed and you've clicked on compiler you should be ready to just click on here and it should come up with this thing where it says import program and here's the import name so we're just going to say import and we're going to take a look here we're going to double click on it and this is a program very similar to the one that you're going to see in lab 2 but if we try compiling we're going to find that there's errors and there's an error here and uh, you're going to have to figure out how to fix that error. So it looks like there's only one error now, but sometimes if you clean up one error, there might be other ones. So then what you do is once you've cleaned it up and figured it out, you're going to go back to here and say, well, how many errors were there? When you type characters in, so this means you have to get it working. When you type characters in, what happens? When you do this, what happens? And so forth. And further down here, problem here where it says lab 2b errors. So if we click on this and it's got lab 2b here we say import into compiler and again we say import and we can take a look here and this is a fairly lengthy program so it's nice you don't have to type it in but you should change your name, your student ID, your course ID and all this kind of stuff in here. But once you've done that let's see where are the errors, how many errors do we have. So let's take a look there. So there's an error here and if you clean that up you'll find that there's more than one error so you're going to have to make sure you can figure out what these errors are. Let's go back and take a look at the third version of this down here which is this guy here lab 2c errors and again we can just import into compiler and it's going to have some errors that we're going to have to correct and we're just going to say import it should say lab 2c errors but anyway 
so we've got this and we're going to double click and it's got some errors too I believe if we click here and again it's got some errors so we're going to have to fix those up now and you do have to answer these questions to help you figure out the errors you can go to labs you can go to lab 2 console programming what you're going to see here is a perfect version of the program now you can compare this to the one that you imported and help you find where your errors are same thing for lab 2b and same thing for lab 2c here so this is a way to actually be able to help you troubleshoot your code and make it work without doing a lot of work now this has been a very short introduction to mco455 and i've tried to make this as easy for you as i can to get going on the labs and to get comfortable with it later you're going to be creating a lot of your own code for various other things